obviously there's a difference between motion in one dimension, two and three dimensions. And I think I told you the difference the other day. I might want to pass this also. When you consider motion in one dimension, the object is moving along one particular axis, isn't it? Either along the x, the y, or the z axis. But in motion in two dimensions, the object is moving along a plane. Like I told you the other day, if an object is moving on this table, would that be one dimensional or two dimensional? Two dimensional, because you have the x and the y axis. But if there's an object moving, uh, just like a butterfly flying around, that's going to be three-dimensional because you have both, I mean, you have x, y, and z axis. In this chapter, this chapter is not a practical one because you're only going to talk about one-dimensional motion. The best example for one-dimensional motion is when you drop an object, it'll go straight down, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the best example for one-dimensional motion. But think about it while you're driving, when you, when you were driving this morning from home to the school, you were not driving in a straight line, were you? No. So practically this chapter doesn't have its advantages, but the next chapters build on this. So this is the basic of all chapters. The first thing that we have to remember is reality itself depends on what you're talking with respect to. For example, am I moving now? Am I moving now? Well, with respect to the classroom, I'm not moving. But if you had watched me from off the earth, from space, you would have seen me tumbling around because the earth is spinning on its own axis, isn't it? At about 30 kilometers per hour. So whenever you talk about rest and motion, you need to have a reference frame. That's very important. I'll give you another example, although it might sound silly. Let's say you go to the North Pole and talk to somebody there. And then you have a long journey, come to the South Pole and talk to somebody else there. When you were talking to these two people, both cases went to you standing upright. Yes? But off the earth, if you had been watching this, you know that when you were at the South Pole, both of you would have been upside down. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Now, which one of this, these statements is correct? Both are right. It's what you compare yourself with. Don't have time for too many examples. Let me give you one more. If two people are driving on adjacent lanes, uh, the freeway, and you're driving at the same speed in the same direction, and you're only looking at each other. Let's say two people have fallen in love with each other, madly in love, so they don't see anything else. They see only each other. And you ask one person, is that person moving? They would say, no. But if somebody watched this from off the cars, road, from the roadside, he or she would say, well, both of them were moving. So I think you got an idea of what a reference frame is. Somebody moves this way, what's the distance? Seven meters. What's the displacement? Five meters. You know why. Four squared plus three squared. Take the square root. Okay. Displacement is the shortest distance from the starting point to the finishing point. All right. So I'm just to, trying to strengthen what I already told you. And we're not going too fast. Actually, we're going too slow. Oh, I forgot to put meters there. Yeah, on top I put it. Okay. And I was trying to say that if you go back to the initial position, your displacement is zero. Right? Okay. That's in those. And I cannot give you more time. And I also told you that if you move along this, delta x is x2 minus x1. That is positive. In this case, it's positive. It's 40 meters, isn't it? Or 40 units. Right? But if I go back, what's the displacement in that case? 
the thicker arrow there. What's the displacement? Negative. negative what? Negative 20. 20 minus 40, isn't it? Okay. 20 minus 40. Negative 20. Negative 20 meters. So that should be very clear. But yet, what is AC? What's AC? How much is AC? Positive or negative? Positive. Okay. AB is 40. BC is negative 20. AC is positive 20. I have tried my best and spent a lot of time. Let's go on. And then I told you these two formulas are okay. Average velocity, delta x by delta t, that is this. Then I told you about instantaneous velocity. No, yeah, that's too slow. Okay. Yeah, so that I don't forget. The slope of an xt graph. Remember the lab that you did? It was a position time graph, wasn't it? Time on the x-axis, position on the y-axis, and the slope. What's the slope here? It's Give me the number. Zero. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the slope of this line, because it's horizontal, is zero. That means you were not moving, correct? So the slope gives you the speed, right? So if it's more sloping, then you're moving faster. faster. Thank you. I'm going to get mathematicians now. All right. What's the slope of this line? Zero. What's happening to the slope? Inc what? Increasing, right? At 45 degrees, what's the slope? One. one. Because tan 45 is one. Right. You have to study all this in math, okay? Tan theta, the angle made by the line with the x-axis, the tangent of that angle gives you the slope. Okay, so tan 45 is one. Agreed? Yeah. All right, go on, go on. The slope is increasing, right? What's the slope now? I don't like that. That's where mathematics is limited. Because when you say infinity, at least you said infinity. Because some people would say undefined. That's even worse. What do you mean by infinity? You know, when people say undefined, it could be undefined because of two reasons. Either because it's too small or because it's too huge. If one apple is shared amongst all the Americans, how much will each one get? That's infinitesimal, means very small. You understand? But in this case, we are, we are saying infinity, not because it's too small, but because it's too big. Because tan 90, if you put in your calculator, tan 89.99 becomes huge, right? And tan 90, Nothing. Are you getting it? Yeah. So you can never have a line like this. That's what I was trying to say. You cannot. Nobody can move like that. Which means in zero time, if you have a line like that, let me not destroy that. Okay. What's that? Okay. And I've also seen students, unfortunately, students who draw graphs like this. You're going to have a laugh now. If you understand. <laughs> That's time travel. I wish I could do it. That's moving back in time, isn't it? Yes. Think about what you're drawing and what you're doing. You cannot have something like that. So the slope of the xt graph gives you gives you speed because we said x x is position. If I said slope of displacement time graph, then it would give you velocity. Did you hear the difference? Slope of position time graph gives you speed. Slope of displacement time graph gives you velocity. All right, let's move on as mouths are opening. What does the slope of the velocity time graph give you? Slope of the velocity time graph. Acceleration. Because you know that velocity is dx by dt. I mean, acceleration is dv by dt, isn't it? What do you mean by slope? It's dy by dx. dy by dx. Or in high school, rise over run. Oh. So you got to think about what's on the y-axis, what's on the x-axis. Okay, velocity and time. dv by dt. All right. Let's move on. So that's acceleration. 
delta V by delta T meter per second squared instantaneous you take delta T equal to zero I don't know I forgot right there please write slope of uh, velocity time graph gives you acceleration slope of velocity time graph gives you acceleration okay now you have to get the equations and we did already get one equation so I'm going to fly by did we get this equation V is equal to V naught plus A T. We're going to get four equations before we can think about doing problems. Shall we go on to the second one? Because this has already been explained. Great. The second one. Stop. Is this equation meaningful? Watch. If you rearrange this, wouldn't you get it as dx is equal to velocity multiplied by time? Isn't that what I did? But I took the average mathematically this time. V0 is the initial velocity, V is the final, and what I did is added them up, divided by 2, it will work this time. You know why? Because it's a constant acceleration. Wasn't it increasing uniformly? So if the initial is 0, the final is 20, what's the average velocity? 10. 10. The average... So that is delta x is v naught plus v by 2 times t, right? Now, a simple substitution of this, this equation, you go ahead and substitute. In place of the final velocity, can't you write all this stuff? Yeah, write it. Go before me. Yeah, I had to say that is uh, anyway. Go ahead, don't don't copy what's on the board. Just in place of the final velocity, write the whole thing. This is just a repetition. I'm trying to get this equation. Okay, watch it. Don't miss it. Watch it. I'm getting, trying to get the top equation, and I have to substitute for, isn't this what I told you? Substitute there, what do you get? V0 plus A, delta T plus V0, divided by 2, simple algebra. What's V0 plus V0? What's V0 plus V0? Yeah, that's what you see there, 2 V0. And, you know, some crazy people would cancel that two. No, that two belongs to both of them, so I had to divide both by two. And then times delta t. Now I can cancel. Okay, now it's canceled and then distributed and I get my equation. This is the best equation of all. I call it the king of all equations. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the q. Not the king. What are the terms here? Which term is missing? Because totally there are five terms. There are totally five terms. Hold on. There are totally five terms. What are the five terms? V naught. There. There are five terms. And what's missing here? Final velocity. All right. Um, we had an equation like this. I'll write it again. V naught plus V by 2 times delta T, isn't it? What's missing here? Acceleration. The other four are there, isn't it? Okay. What's missing in this equation? Delta X. So why do you need all these equations? Well, you need to read the problem and decide which equation you're going to use. Depending on what's given and what you have to find. That's the whole purpose. Is this clear? Every single equation has the initial velocity. Because if you forget your roots in life, you do not get anywhere. That's when you get headstrong, you know, forget where you come from, and then that's what physics proves. You cannot work out any problem unless you know its initial boundary. You know what I'm talking about? Go ahead, I'll give you three minutes.
what? Square both sides. Remember that a plus b whole squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, isn't it? So there's a middle term. Okay. There is a middle term which, which is twice the product of those two terms. So that's why it's 2 v naught a delta t. It's so meaningful. I'm talking about this term, right? Okay, now let's do one thing. Let's keep this first term as it is. But from the second term, I will take out 2a. So that gives me v naught delta t plus, what do I have to write there to get the third term? Okay, 1 half a. Does anybody recognize this guy? No? Yeah. Yeah. That's this fellow. We just derived it. I called it the king. Isn't it? Salt. V naught squared plus 2A delta X. Got it. Okay, what's missing in this equation? Time. You don't have the time factor in this equation. So now I have given you four equations and we are ready to do problems with the additional information that any freely falling object has an acceleration of 9.8 meter per second squared when going down, but if it's going up, minus 9.8 meter per second squared, right? Okay. 